What's going on, Badger fans? How are we going to beat Ohio State this weekend? It is not an impossible task. Let's talk about it. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. Really do appreciate you tuning in. I'm Ryan Herring. Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn jobs help you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. Terms and conditions to apply. Uh, we got a fun guest going on. For, for the first time officially, uh, we've got Curtis, the playmaker in Discord, joining the show. Um, he's been on a bunch of the call-in shows, but this is our first kind of like full show together. I'm really excited about it. I reached out because you've been like the number one Braden Lock guy. Maybe not the number one, but you've been all about this is going to look better. I, I'm confident in him. I like what I've seen so far. Did did he meet your expectations? Yeah. So, well, thanks for having me on, Ryan. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I would say I was the number one Braden Lock guy, um, but one thing that I, I really liked about him is, you know, ever since he came in, and 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 I think there was something to be said being the third quarterback to, to transfer into the school after you got Nick Evers. I know we were all really excited about you know, him and what he could do. And then Tanner Mordecai, obviously, with the, you know, uh, breadth of experience playing at Oklahoma and, and SMU. And then, you know, you got a guy, uh, a Braden Locke, kind of, you know, who is this third guy coming in from Mississippi State? I mean, you know, he didn't play last year. He was a backup. He was a freshman. Who is this guy? And the more you kind of dig into it and, and, and look at his background, where he's come from, what he's done in his career, um, the more encouraged you start to feel. Obviously, coming from Rockwall, Texas, 6A, um, you know, setting the Texas passing and touchdown records uh, in one of the most difficult divisions in all of high school football, going to play for the godfather of their offense we're running now uh, in Mike Leach at, at Mississippi State. Um, there's a reason, obviously, he went there, and, and, and Mike, some, Mike Leach obviously saw some things in him. Longo recruited him at UNC, and, and now he's here with us. You know, there was a lot of encouraging signs there, and I think, you know, as you went through the spring and saw he was immediately second team, and there was a big gap. And then, you know, you you hear, you know, a lot of the throws and plays being made and, and practice was from him. Um, and you saw how he, you know, the composure he held himself with in the spring game. And, you know, it was, a, it was a cold, rainy, nasty, not very Texas weather game. And, you know, he played very well. And and so, you know, you, you saw a lot of really good signs. And, and, and I'm definitely excited to see what he continued to continue to bring to the table. Yeah, and the other thing I thought was interesting, and we didn't even talk about this a ton. Uh, this came up from a comment. From Tyler, 50% completion rate, not great. But he was there at the game. Tyler was crazy wind, unpredictable. So bad conditions on the road. And there were six, at least five or six drops. Now, there's a drop or two every game. So it's not fair to say, like, he's the only guy that suffered from drops. Mordecai's had drops affect him, too. But I, I, I thought he played as well, honestly, as well as you could have expected in those conditions. Yeah, and, and you got to look at the nature of the drops too, right? I mean, if you go back and watch the game, especially in the first you know few drives, a lot of those drops were, were purely receiver error. They're balls that should have 100% been caught. He was putting the ball, for the most part, exactly where it needed to be. Probably could have a little bit more touch here or there, but either way, as a receiver and, you know, as, a, as, as, as you know, uh, I'm sure their coaches will tell them, that gets on your hands right on the money. You got to make those grabs, especially in key third downs and, in big plays like that. I thought a lot of his balls were incredibly accurate. I thought he threw it with, you know, good timing and anticipation. Um, and I thought he made the right reads uh, almost, you know, for the most part throughout the game. I think there was maybe one play where it looked like it probably could have been a 50-50 pass. But um, for the most part, I think if you go back, and, and I don't have access to the PFF stats, but they do adjust completion percentage. I think his adjusted completion percentage are probably closer to high 60s, maybe even low 70s percent. Yeah, I agree. I thought some of those balls were great. And by the way, he was under – that was not a clean pocket for, for much of the game. He had a lot of inside pressure, took some shots. Now, ball security, like, listen, he's a smaller guy. They said three fumbles in two games. Um, I would not never put that last one on him that didn't get called a fumble because of the targeting. The, every, most quarterbacks fumbled that one, but he's got to take care of the ball. But aside from that, I don't know what else you could have expected here. Um, I gave him an A. This is a comment from Dave. He said Locke looked great and he's a bit too much. It was still Illinois, not a very good Illinois. And while some of his passes were dropped, it was still 50%. If this was an A, then Mertz's initial game against Illinois was an A++. 
I want to start with that one. Yeah, Mertz's initial game against Illinois wasn't. I, I mean, I don't think anybody would argue that that game was not an A plus plus plus. That was about as good of a game as was, any first time quarterback could ever have. I don't think that will ever be top. No, know? that I is mean, an A plus plus plus. Twenty and twenty one with five touchdowns. <laughs> um, again, I I I grade it all in context and expectations, mm-hmm. right? I hold Braylon Allen to a different standard than than our Braden Locke, right? They're they're different types of players at different ages or uh, stages of their career. For me, that was everything I could have expected from a freshman quarterback, but. Certainly if you give him a B or whatever, that's fine. I want to move on to this next question and ping you on this one, Curtis, because I find this this question really interesting. Where's the line between being really excited about winning a Big Ten game, which Wisconsin did on the road, while also acknowledging this team needed an 18-point rally to beat a not really good Illinois team? Yeah, I mean, and I think that's a fair question. I know, you know, I've heard a lot of people kind of talk about that uh, in the aftermath of the game. And you know, one of the things I think about is, uh, well, one, this this not so good Illinois team beat us by, you know, 24 in our home and got our coach fired last year. So, so that's one thing to start with. But, um, you know, when you when you go into a game like that and you're not playing your best, you know, you really have two choices. You can either you know fold and kind of fall over. And I think, you know, last year we saw that's what this team would have done. You know, you would have seen them sort of kind of fold in on themselves, you know, start feeling sorry for themselves. Maybe the body language changes on the sideline. Um and they never really did that. They, they showed that they can be resilient. And even though the things aren't going in their favor, they can continue to fight. And I think in situations like that, it becomes less about how good either team is. I mean, it, you're, you're faced in adversity. And these are Division One athletes on the other side of the field with a coach who knows what it takes to make, you know, build a team that's very successful. And, and at the same time, we were able to rally back, score 18 points in one quarter, which uh, for Wisconsin is, is, a, is a lot, you know. And, um, you know, to see that, especially when the weather wasn't great, you know, we haven't really clicked on offense all season. We had a backup, you know, quarterback in there to be able to come back and win that game is huge for the program, even if it was a, a, a not so great Illinois team and, and, uh, they've been struggling this season. The fact that we were able to pull that off is still, um, quite a feat. And I think that the team should feel very proud of that. And I, and I think that will give them some momentum moving forward into the rest of the season. And it feels like we needed one of those to go our way, right? Like, cause the Washington State game could have been a close win if we don't fumble it away at the end, right? Like, it it feels like over the last couple of years, Wisconsin and Iowa, like, uh, I mean, uh, it feels like there's been too many games where we've come up just short. So coming on the other side of that, it's not luck, right? I mean, it, there, there's balls that bounce certain ways, but you have to earn that victory on the road, I guess is what I'm saying. It's not a fluke. Yeah. Just right into the and court. one of the things I've always heard is luck is where opportunity meets preparation. I mean, we had to put ourselves in position – to benefit from those bounce of balls. If we didn't do that, we it, it wouldn't have mattered. We still wouldn't have won. And I want to go back to the point you made about, you know, being able to pull a game like that out. Uh, I think Brian Smith said it on uh, maybe last week. Sometimes you just need that spark that'll, that'll ignite the whole thing. And I think about, you know, um, I, I think about uh, earlier this season. I think the, the number one play I think that's affected this season more than anything else uh, is that dropped uh, deep ball from uh, Mordecai to Bell in the first game. I think if Bell catches that pass, it's an entirely different season because I think the receiving core becomes very confident. Tanner Mordecai becomes confident. We don't throw that interception. You know, I think that, you know, now we feel like we can make those plays. We can get those deep passes. And I think we're looking at an entirely different team from a, from a mental standpoint, you know, not, not a team that's like, oh, we're still Wisconsin. We still don't really know how to throw the ball. We, you know, our receivers aren't really catching the ball. You know, maybe Bell doesn't drop that pass versus Purdue. Like, I think that that play has had more impact on the mentality of this team, specifically the quarterbacks and the receivers, than any other play um, this season. And I think that this game sort of, um, I want to say, I want to say, answered the answered the call, or, or at least you know somewhat remedied that situation. It, it was a proof of concept that showed, hey, we can do this. We can play the air raid game. We can run those deep passes and 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 catch those fade balls. We can make plays when it's when it's critical time, and and uh, and, and and our offense can work here. And, and, and I think that's a really good point with the momentum that can be built. Um, a play goes one way or the other. I think it's a great point because take that a step further, Wisconsin doesn't close this thing out. They lose a close game to Illinois on the road. Now you've lost two in a row in kind of ugly form going into Ohio State in what was supposed to be like your marquee. We're gonna Everyone's going to be jazzed up. We can't wait for this game. Well, the mood would be infinitely worse, right? Oh, yeah. Like this, this saves the Ohio State environment. Now you still have to go out and play Ohio State, but at least now it's going to be jazzed up a little bit. Yeah, you know, I mean, we were probably in danger of our game getting flexed to Peacock at noon, and uh, good yeah. thing we won. Otherwise, we probably would have been uh, 
you know, maybe not enjoying that game as much, which would have been fine for me. I was, uh, I, I have a Halloween party. I'm going to that night anyway, unfortunately. So I'll be wearing my, uh, my lucky badger shirt under the, uh, under the costume. What do you want to dress as? Uh, so, uh, me and my wife are going as, um, milk and cookies. So I'm going to be dressed in a milk carton, just something simple, you know, it's fun Classic. party, you know, we're going to be hanging out doing stuff. Didn't want to wear like a mask and all, you know, makeup and all that kind of stuff. We're trying to just have a good time. I love it, man. Classic. All right, coming up, we're going to keep Curtis on the show. We're going to talk about that Ohio State game. How can Wisconsin spring the upset? It is not an impossibility, Badger fans. We're going to talk about that next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, a quick break for friends of the show over at LinkedIn. Uh, Curtis would attest to this. You need the right people on your team to win, whether it's in sports, whether it's in competitive foosball, of which I am a freaking master. I'm 38 and one in foosball, by the way. I won a foosball tournament and won the table. So, I, but you need it. If you're playing the end, you need a good partner if it's two on two foosball. So, whatever it is, LinkedIn is going to help you get the right people on your team the first time. They get the right people through the door, screening questions to help get the right applicants. So, nobody's wasting your time or anyone else's. They have the tools and the resources, and they are the number one hiring platform as ranked by small businesses in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free. LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown College. That's LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown College. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. All right, let's get Curtis back in. Uh, Curtis, yeah, my one. Uh, LinkedIn, I used to work in staffing for five years, and LinkedIn was one of the, the platforms that we, we scoured the most. I used to send you know, I used to send hundreds of messages a week on that platform trying to reach out to both you know uh, potential applicants as well as, uh, as, well as uh, managers of companies. I love it, man. Curtis, Curtis supporting the show, LinkedIn. And by the way, my 38 and one foosball record, Curtis, that's my official record. I've won more than that. But the one guy that beat me beat me on slop. He banked it in and it <laughs> it still it still takes me off, man, to this day. I should have been 39 and 0. Um anyway, let, let's talk Ohio State. Let's talk starts off. The line starts at off at minus 14. Uh, first of all, does that seem too high or is that about where you thought it would be? No, you know, I actually think that's um I don't know if it's too high. It's a it's a fair line, I think, based on if you look at the teams, talent composite, and sort of how they've performed so far this year. Um, Ohio State has been, for Ohio State standards, uncharacteristically not so great on offense. Um, you know, they've they've done well. They, their offense is rated higher than ours is this season, but not by a lot. I, I believe right now they're they're number thirty nine in total offense. We're right around number you know mid seventies ish. Um, usually, we're used to seeing Ohio State right at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. So. For them, that's you know that's a not so great performance. Um, and on top of that, you know they've shown some some signs of of being beatable. You know uh, their defense struggles to to get pressure um, despite all the all stars they have on the D line. And um, you know they 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 they've struggled to put team certain teams away. You know when they've had opportunities. So um, you know I think that line probably makes sense based on the perception of Vegas and the, the betting market right now. Well, let me ask you this then. Do you come out of this feeling okay if it's like a 35-21 game? If that line hits, given some of the recent struggles against Ohio State where Wisconsin, quite frankly, hasn't looked like they belong on the same field, right? There, there's been a couple games recently where it's been embarrassing, quite frankly. Like if it's a 35-21 game, the line is right about accurate. Is that, I hate to say moral victory, but that, does that show some type of progress for Wisconsin or is that not good enough? Well, I think it depends on how that 35-21 to 21 victory happens. Quite frankly, I don't think it will be that type of game. I think we're looking at more of like a 27 to 13 type game where it's a, a going to be a defensive struggle for much of the game. One thing I don't think people really understand about this Ohio State team is that this is going to be by far the best defense we've played all season. Um, Ohio State right now, they're ranked, I believe, number uh, number two in, in pass efficiency defense, and they're right around like number four total defense. Mm. To put that in perspective, Iowa was like number 20, right? So, I mean, it's, 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 it is a, a definitely a step up in, in, in defense um uh in in this game and i think that you know even with you know seeing potentially some of our, our our offense start to blossom at the end of the illinois game i still think we're a little ways away from being able to perform at a level high enough to just straight up knock this team off um so so how do you win in a game like this well the way you win this game you kind of throw the an analytics out the window you kind of throw you know the strategy and sticks out the window we have to come out in this game with our hair on fire and play better than we're capable of playing right? We need to play like this is our Super Bowl. And, and we also need Ohio State to sort of play like they just played a huge, you know, uh, Big Ten East altering game against Penn State last week. You know, they, they need to show signs of wear. They need to be, you know, uh, lack of focus. They need to make mistakes. They need to t make turnovers. And we need to capitalize on those turnovers. That's how we win a game like this. Um, not, not by just out scheming them on the field, not by, you know, trying to take 
our best players and put them in position. I mean, obviously that's what we're going to do, but the key to winning a game like this is to, is to play up to our competition, right? Not to, not to play at our level. Well, and if we're being honest and if we're being fair, a lot of the Wisconsin gets them in camp around. I mean, obviously you, you can't, and they're coming off a Penn state game. Like this is really the best set of circumstances that Wisconsin has had Ohio state in, in years. There's been a lot of games at Ohio state or in Indianapolis. But getting them at home in Madison, you mentioned it coming off that win against Illinois where you're feel, at least feeling good about yourself. Forget the fact that it's Illinois. You're feeling good about yourself. That's the important thing. And they're coming off a Penn State game that was tough. Penn State plays defense. Penn State hits. Um, I think that's that's the biggest key there is that you're just getting them at the best possible moment. I love the fact that uh, Braden Locke has, has been in a moment, right? He's been in a fourth quarter. He's been under pressure a little bit. He's been hit. So he's a little battle tested coming into this game as much as possible for one start. Uh, how do you guard Marvin Harrison Jr.? Do you do you, so for those who haven't been paying attention? That that's the best receiver in college football. It, it might not be close. He's 200 yards ahead of anyone in the Big Ten in receiving yards. He's averaging 18 yards per catch. He's a monster. He's six four. He's twitchy. He's physical. What is? I don't even know what the Badgers do. Do you do? You, shade a safety and, and play man to man and just hope no one else destroys your secondary. What, what are your thoughts on guarding Marvin Harrison Jr. here? Well, you know, the interesting thing about that um, is, is, you know, a lot of teams have been able to do it this year. One of the things Marv struggled with is getting off man coverage, especially press man. You know, he's a great corner or a great receiver and, you know, one-on-one -on -one with pretty much all of our corners. I think, I think he would probably win that battle, but if we, you know, continue to play man, like we've played man all season, I do think he's going to struggle. Now he might get some touches. You know, he's right now he's leading the team in in, uh, in touchdowns. He has six touchdowns on you know their team. They have twelve total. Um, so he's by far their their main you know receiving threat. Um, but again, you know teams have done a good job of sort of taking him out of the game by playing man on him, and then and then you know having a safety huddle over the top. And I think one of the things that that gives us a situation in which we can play this to our advantage. Ohio State right now is number ninety nine in the country in rushing. I mean, they have struggled to run the ball. And a lot of that is on their offensive line. Their offensive line uh, is young. It's struggled. I know Badger fans will remember the name Carson Hinsman. You know, he's starting for them now. Uh, mm -hmm. It was only, what, two years ago, uh, not even two years ago, where we were in a battle for him. It was him, you know, it was Ohio State and Wisconsin uh, to win that battle. Now he's starting for them. And a lot of the, the struggles that we've, you know, been, you know, having the issues we've had with our center game, they're having the same, the same issues. You know, so th they're struggling uh, there. Um, they've been struggling to run the ball. So, you know, if we can, you know, kind of play more of our, our nickel, maybe even some, you know, maybe if we're playing well, maybe even some of our dollar package, I think that will sort of help make it more difficult to, you know, to, to, to just go ahead and throw the Marv. Um, and, and that could be a way to, to, to neutralize his effectiveness in the game. The other person, though, that, and, and I'll say that the, the person I'm more concerned with, uh, to be quite frank, is Cade Stover. He's the second leading receiver on their team, and he's got three touchdowns. Last year, he was a nightmare for us to cover. I mean, I think he had, what, like two touchdowns? Probably, you know, I think he had – that was like his breakout game. I mean, he had a bunch of yards versus us, and we don't have a linebacker that can cover him, and you probably have to throw Roller on him, and I don't know if you want to do that because that takes Roller out of the rest of the offense. So, you know, I, um, he's the one that really scares me uh, in this game. Yeah, he's really good. Physical, great hands. He's, he's a matchup problem too. I, I'm curious – McCord, uh, you know, 12 touchdowns, one pick this year. He, he's been battle-tested, too. This is another one where you almost wish he didn't have to make that fourth-quarter drive against Notre Dame to win the game early in the year where he was put in that moment and they came out ahead. Like, you'd almost wish that he wasn't battle-tested, right? Because that was – coming into this year, they were finally going to maybe have a bit of a quarterback drop-off. But he's played pretty well. He's not great. He's not C.J. Stroud. And he doesn't mm -hmm. hurt you with the legs, which I, I got to say is a huge advantage for Wisconsin. He's struggled with mobile quarterbacks all year long. At least he's going to stay in the pocket. But – He's been pretty good lately. Uh, again, 12 picks, one – or 12 touchdowns, one pick. I don't know if that's the weakness that we had hoped it would be. Well, you know, it's, it's – I'll say it like this. It's not their strength. And, and that's where I think – that's why I think this, this, um, this upset is indeed possible because, you know, yes, he's, he's been through the adversity. Obviously, he's, you know, had the game-winning drive versus Notre Dame in the fourth quarter, and that, that did give him a lot of confidence. I think if it hadn't gone that way, we'd be looking at a very different Kyle McCord. We might even see – Devin Brown, you know, I think, you know, um, that was obviously a very close battle in the, in, in the fall and um, McCord obviously won out, but again, you know, he's, yes, he's done well, but he's also done incredibly poorly. I mean, I look at uh, Cal McCord and I see, 
a classic Wisconsin quarterback. I mean, that's he, he's not gonna he's not gonna be the reason they win, but he, he at this point he's probably not gonna be the reason they lose either. And I think the the if we're gonna win this game, we gotta get in his head. We gotta we gotta hit him. We gotta rattle him. We gotta get some pressures, um, which we've actually done a, a pretty decent job of this season, getting to the quarterback and and generating tackles for loss and pressure. You know, I think if we can do that and, and kind of get in his head, I'll be honest. Wisconsin is significantly louder than Notre Dame State. You know, so this is going to be a, a, a more hostile environment than Notre Dame was. I mean, half Notre Dame was Buckeye fans when, when he was there. So, you know, that, that's one thing I think that can can work in our advantage. Um, but again, you know, I think he's if, if, if players are left wide open, if Marvin Harrison's torching our coverage, like he's going to find him, you know, but he's also going to take errant throws over the middle. And if we can capitalize, maybe get an interception or two, you know, I know our safeties and our corners have done a pretty good job of that, especially Hallman. You know, mm-hmm. then, then yeah, we can we can get in his head early, and I think that can really you know shape the balance of the game. So I agree completely with your your pressure point. Wisconsin has to hit McCord. If if McCord can sit back there, he he's going to find any of a multitude of Ohio State weapons. Right, our secondary is not good enough to hold up against this this attack for periods of time. But I think we have seen some players emerge a little bit. Petrovsky's done a good job getting pressure occasionally. You know, they I, this is going to be a huge game for Tressel. Trestle, because James Thompson Jr. has been a little nicked up. That's been probably our best pass rushing defense lineman. Trestle has to have a great game plan. Just he has to be on his game completely because he's going to have to manufacture pressure. We've seen that we can't consistently get pressure with three or four. Occasionally we can, but he's going to have to have a great job uh, manufacturing that pressure. You're going to have to hit McCord because if you don't, I don't think there's any way you win this game if you aren't able to make him a little uncomfortable. And then if you can make this game close, if you can keep it close, that's where that crowd noise, right? That's where it starts to build. That it can't be twenty-one to three going into halftime, right? Because and and at that point, all the energy's gone. Go, oh, you're muted. This is his first time on the show. Rookie moves. Well, here I got to take a break anyway. When I come back, we'll get back with Curtis. We got a bunch more comments to get into. Um, Ohio State. And uh, a question about this coaching staff that I want to throw to Curtis. We're going to do that next on Lockdown Badgers. Uh, we got to take a break. Anyway, our friends of the show today, this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. And there's a reason why. They're the easiest and most exciting DFS to use. And again, I've talked about it. I don't have time to compete with a crazy amount of sharks and pros stacking data. I can't do that. D- Prize Picks takes that out of the equation. They make it simple, easy. You just take the stats projections on two to six players, and then you watch the winnings roll in, and it's really simple to do it quickly. Within 60 seconds, I clickety-clack, I get in, I get out, I have my players, I have my stats, and I'm ready to go. The winnings roll in, and they offer Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your account this football season because we are all about quick, easy, simple. That is why I use prize picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash college. Use code Lockdown College for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash Lockdown College. Use code Lockdown College for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, let's get uh, Curtis back in. I do want to say thank you to everybody for tuning in to the show. As always, you guys are amazing. Let's see if Curtis's mic is back up. Can you hear me now? Got you. Love it. Perfect. I, of course, I you know bust out my new lab mic and uh, runs out of power halfway through the show. So. Unbelievable. Unbelievable <laughs> Curtis. But honestly, it was like you were doing me. I had to do a break anyway, and I'm not always great at hitting my breaks. So in a way, Grassi is my friend. Um, I want to get into a couple of these comments. Let's see. We have this one um, talking about Ohio State coming off a, a letdown. This is from Timothy P. Um, OSU will very likely have a letdown game. Defensively, Wisconsin has to stop the run, force McCord to throw and pick off some of his Darren's throws. Uh, I, it sounds a lot like what you just said. Yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, I think you know, we've definitely struggled against the run. I think they are going to want to try to establish the run on us just because that's sort of been one of the things that we've struggled with over the last few games. And um, they've also struggled to get their run game going. And I, I, I don't know if Henderson's going to be back for this game. I know he was questionable going into Penn State. Um, their backups have played really well. But again, you know, their, their, their offensive line has struggled. And I think this is a game we really need our linebacking core to step up because they're going to be asked to do a lot. You know, they're going to be asked to fill the run lanes to make sure they make the right reads. And this is what I mean by saying we have to play above our skis. We have to, you know, fill the gaps. We have to make the right reads, play confident. We have to make tackles in space. If we can do that and stop them from being able to run and force them to throw the ball, you know, that's where I think it sets up well in our advantage because, you know, we've seen our, our our backfield play with some some attitude this season, 
And, um, you know, and that's where I think, you know, again, you, you get a guy like a Hallman who's all of a sudden starts playing, you know, like he did in the spring game, you know, or, or maybe Wooler, Wooler gets hot and, you know, maybe you see, you know, four queen uh, step up and, and Alexander Smith play, play well, you know, you, you might see some, some forced throws and, and some, uh, you know, some tough situations. And, and if Camp Randall gets rocking, I mean, I was there, I remember my freshman year of college was a 2010 Ohio state game where yeah. we beat them. And that was the loudest environment I think I'd ever been in. So, you know, if, if we can get it like that, they're going to struggle. And I don't think McCord, you know, as good as he's been, I don't know how he's going to hold up in that situation. So I would say this, and I agree with everything you said, like you have to play with your hair on the part. This has to be your most physical, energetic. The bench has to be on fire, like everything. Energy comes from everywhere and it all builds into one pot. But I feel like we've seen, at what point do you say this is kind of who we are too? And we can't play that far above our skis. Like we've seen our linebackers for half the year at this point. They've made some plays, like, but I don't think they're ever going to be where we need them to be this year, right? And at some point, is it just kind of, I don't want to say foolish, but is it difficult to continue to hope that they play a little bit better? Well, and, and that's why I think, you know, uh, another key to this, again, in my opinion, is Ohio State needs to help us out. You know, they need to be, if Ohio State's operating at 100%, you know, kind of like, like I would say Ohio State at, at peak Ohio State was when we played them last year. I mean, we played poorly and they were playing at 100% and they absolutely buzzsawed us, right? I do not see that Ohio State showing up on Saturday. But if Ohio State's playing near their peak, it's going to be nearly, you know, an impossible task. Um, so that we, we do need them to help us out. They need to, you know, they need to miss blocks. They need to miss tackles. You know, they need to be a little sluggish. They need to be, you know, uh, uh, off timing on their throws. You know, they need to be out of sorts in order for us to really be in this game. We have the the, the ability to win this game. I mean, crazier things have happened. You've seen bigger upsets in, in time. and. You know, yeah, and, and so I don't think by any means this game is is, is impossible. But um, but again, it's it's a game in which we're going to have to play our best game that we've played all season. You know, we're going to have to see our linebackers step up and play better than they've played all season. Um, and we're going to have to see our offense make plays in the clutch when they absolutely need to make plays. And um, to their credit, they were able to do it on on Friday or on uh, on Saturday last week. Yeah, and to your point, for like. Ohio State's lost to Purdue. I mean, we have seen massive upsets in college football. Like, the idea that there's no shot here is completely incorrect. You get them at home. Wisconsin is a good team. Like, let's let's be honest. There's talent on this roster. The coaching – you tell me Luke Fickle isn't going to want to beat Ohio State. Not not that these, he's out there playing defensive line, but he's going to have this team firing, I think. Like, so, to your point, if Ohio State can stumble a little bit at the start, Wisconsin can get going. That crowd, that momentum builds even more, and then the screws start to tighten. That's the recipe because then you can lean on it a little bit with Braylon Allen, who is coming off a really physical running game. I think that's that that's how it works. If if it works, um, let me throw this at you. Uh, this is from Michael, who's Michael's not been the biggest fan for a while. I think of this show, but also of this coaching staff. <laughs> but he says, name three things the new coaching staff does well. Okay, so I would say first off, um, recruiting. You know, I think that they have done a tremendous job of that. And I don't just mean, you know, getting high, really ranked players or things like that. I mean, actually looking at the players that we're getting. I mean, if if you do a deep dive for more than a few seconds or more than a cursory look at our, you know, 247 rankings, you'll see these are these are dudes they're bringing in. You know, they, they, they're they athletes. They got size. They got skill. They're playing at high levels. They're um, they're incredibly well, you know, uh, well developed uh, recruits. So that's one thing I would say that they do uh, incredibly well. Um, number two, I think, is. Um, I think I think they're instilling toughness. You know, you might not have seen it in the first few games, and I think that might be more of a symptom of maybe previous regimes or, you know, sort of the last few years sort of being a little bit more of a struggle for the team. But, you know, the grit and, and determination and, and toughness I saw last week, you very rarely saw in the last two or three years. I mean, I outside of the Nebraska game last year where we did come back, and to their credit, they did win that game, there wasn't a lot of games that I've seen in the last three or four years where we get down, you know, 21 to seven in the fourth and we come back and win the game. Um, and then the last thing I, I, I you know, I want to say is, and, and, and again, I think, and Michael probably won't agree with this, you know, it sounds like he's probably not the type to agree with this, but I think it's belief. You know, I think that with this staff, you believe, Hey, we can do more than what we've been. We can, we can be a team that can compete with the Ohio States, or we can be a team that can get great recruits and, and build into something, you know, maybe a level higher than we've been in the past. So that's what I would say is the, the three things they do. Well, that's a, that's a phenomenal answer, Curtis. I love all of those. I'm going to give you one more. They build infrastructure, right? They they revamp the strength and conditioning program. Mm -hmm. They revamp the marketing program, which people can say that doesn't matter. And in the NIL department, in the NIL era, that matters. Uh, they revamp the recruiting department, bringing in two guys and their team that are dedicated recruiters. 
meant for that role, not other people shoehorned into it. Right. So everything you said, I agree with. And on top of that, I think they build the infrastructure around a program that's necessary. Like programs don't win without all the various components working underneath in unison. Right. They don't just walk on the field and win. Strength and conditioning needs to be on par. Marketing, recruiting departments, all of it. So, yeah, I don't think Michael loves a new staff, but there, there's four things right there. Um, Curtis, give me give me I don't know if you'll be on again before the Ohio State game because I'm be traveling. I don't know if I'll do the live call in shows. That's a, that's a reminder for everybody. Logistics this week will be a little weird. Content's coming, but it might be a little different formats. Where do you, what do you think is going to happen this weekend? Let's end on that one. So um, the last major, I want to say the last major night game we had um, was in the 2016 season, and it was us first in Nebraska. We won in overtime. I believe it was overtime. But like a week or two before that game, we played Ohio State at night. It was a 7, 7 p.m. night game. I was at that game. Uh, it was a game where, quite frankly, I thought we stood no chance. Coming into it, um, we were, you know, it was right after we had beat LSU uh, to start the year. We went and we we beat uh, Michigan State at, at their house, and we lost to a really good Michigan team that year. And then we had Ohio State coming in the very next week. And I remember thinking, you know, I don't know what we're going to do offensively. I don't know how our defense is going to perform. You know, this is Ohio State. They had the exact same, you know, recruit advantage over us, you know, that they've always had. And, um, you know, I, I thought we were a good team, but, you know, I didn't really know how we were going to be able to move the ball, how are we, how are, how are we going to be able to score. Um, and, and we got really close. We had the lead in the fourth quarter. I think it was 17 to 14. And they had one really strong drive with, um, uh, what was their quarterback, JT Barrett at the time, and, and salted the game away. And that was a rough one. But, you know, it was a game that we were in it to the end. And to be quite honest, I think that this game is going to be in the same very same situation. I think we're going to come out. I think we're going to play up. I think they're going to struggle on the road. I think they're going to have some frustrations and, you know, some things where you see the Ohio state, you know, Twitter sphere talking about fire Ryan day and kick all the coaches out and, you know, start the freshman players. And you're going to see that probably pop up, you know, some point throughout the game. And I think coming into the fourth quarter, we're going to be in a position to win it. Um, but if I, if you forced me, if you twisted my hand to make a prediction with all the positive things I've been talking about, I'm thinking we're going to see something around a 24, 17 Ohio state victory. I love it. I, and I love it for the fact that not the loss, but, I'm going to be there. And I think Rajiv said something similar. I just want a really good game into the fourth. I just want to feel like we, we punched him in the mouth, not, not literally, but figuratively, you know, and we didn't fold over. So I think that's a great answer. He is Curtis. He is the playmaker. Thank you so much for joining the show, man. And we're going to talk to the rest of you all week long, huge week, lots of content coming up on Wisconsin.